tell us a little, about, a little bit about the history of ba Belfast City Hall? Yep, so this building is over 100 years old. 1898 began construction. It took eight years to build and opened in 1906. Uh, this building was constructed after Queen Victoria. She gave Belfast a charter in 1888 and that charter gave Belfast city status. People back then wanted the beautiful building in the city centre to mark the occasion. What do you think of that there? More homes and places for people to stay, homeless people. Hands up who agrees in that one. Oh, I think we're all in agreement. Have you ever met anyone famous? I think the most famous person I've ever seen in City Hall is the Queen. Uh, back in 2014, she was here uh, as part of a, a visit to Belfast. Uh, she was up in the Lord Mayor's private rooms and then she had dinner in the Great Hall. But a lot of the staff were invited down to the main marvel at the Grand Staircase there to see her off about 2.30 in the afternoon. And I don't think, I, I've never seen her before and I don't think I'll ever see her again, but I think that's the most famous person I've ever seen at City Hall. How much has your job changed in the last 20 years? Okay, well I think uh, tourism in Belfast has really changed uh, uh, hugely in the city. Uh, 20 years ago in the city, people just didn't come to Belfast. Uh, Belfast has seemed to be a bit of a no-go place to come to, but certainly in recent years there's more and more tourists coming into the city every year. We have more and more cruise ships coming into the city, and of course that, our, that means our numbers are increasing as well. Tourism is a really big thing. For a lot of years people didn't come to Belfast because uh, Belfast has seemed to be like a no-go place, but people are very intrigued and very interested now to see what Belfast is all about and see what the city has to offer and certainly uh, my job has certainly changed over the last few years. We're getting more and more busier, we've got more and more staff in the City Hall, we've got a new exhibition downstairs only opened two years ago so because of that increase in tourism the City Hall is changing alongside that too. Spanish and then when I was 16, as you do when you're 16, you decide do you go to university, do you do A-levels and I did languages and then when I was 18 I went to university to study, guess what? Chinese. Chinese, yes. How long have you worked here and what is the best thing about your job? I've worked in Chinese welfare for 12 years. The best thing about my job is diversity. Everything, every day I come in, it's always different. I could be writing a big project plan. I could be dealing with a, a Chinese, uh, like a stakeholders group. I could be planning a lesson for a school. It's very, very diverse. Every day is different, which is a good thing. It's challenging, but it's a good thing. The idea of the Chinese welfare is to support the Chinese community, to integrate into life in Northern Ireland, and to make sure that, that they have fair treatment and that they have help to become uh, fully fledged citizens of this of Northern Ireland. Why do you help children reach their full potential? So children are brought in, uh, babies are looked after, they are taught how to play because how you develop as a baby from zero to three has a very very strong indication of how you will develop later on in life. The second thing is that our Chinese children then begin to learn Chinese when they're young. And every Sunday they go to Strathmillis Primary where the Chinese language school is based and they spend a few hours learning Chinese so that they don't forget the language of their parents and their grandparents. And then I think the work that we're doing here today, me going into schools, doing projects with schools and for me personally being very, very uh, supportive of bilingualism, getting children like yourself to study another language and how that opens your mind to so many new things, that's something that I'm very passionate about because after all, my story of Chinese began when I was eight years old in year six, so I'm very keen to get children in Northern Ireland learning Chinese or another language in primary school and then to continue into post-primary. 
How do you help create a better future for the Chinese community in the area of Orma? Well, uh, we are, you're quite right, we are on the Orma Road, we are right at the Orma Bridge, and in the past this has been an area where there's been lots of conflict. This is a nationalist area, across the road is mainly a, a unionist loyalist area, and the Chinese welfare is right in the middle at the bridge. And for us, we are seeking to use our Chinese culture, which is a third culture, to bring the two local indigenous cultures together. So we, we do outreach in both communities, and for us we're a safe space uh, that people can come, they can explore, and, and sometimes we use Chinese culture as a way of bringing people from the Protestant and the Catholic traditions together, and in fact Chinese New Year next week will be a great chance for all the people of Belfast to get together and to celebrate Chinese New Year. How do you see the future of the Chinese Welfare Association developing? We want to be there as a cultural centre, moving perhaps a wee bit away from welfare and more into education and more into culture and certainly definitely building uh, stronger links between Northern Ireland and, and the land of China itself. Thank you very much for taking the time to answer our questions this morning. Xie xie. Free place to live. Mm. You know, you, when you're young, you don't ever think that you're going to go. You need to go somewhere that you get taken care of. But you wouldn't get a better <laughs> place in the world than here. <laughs> you have the gardens we have, we have a greenhouse, get the tomatoes and all in, get your washing done. See the food? I put on two stone. The food's are good, all homemade, everything's set down in front of you. And the girls can't do enough for you. There's eight of his family too. Four girls and four boys, the same as my mummy had. Well, the wooden building is very outstanding. Except my brother, and you call it like, it wasn't outstanding. He had to get a job, and it was in a linen firm. He two and a half years my senior. And in that job, it was, linen was the main thing. Everywhere, linen. Linen was the thing. Mm -hmm. And the colours die off the bales of linen. It was part of, I suppose, the newcomer's job was to lift these bales of linen, coloured linen, from A to B, I presume. And one guy said, if I were you, my brother was crazy about rowing and the sea. That was his outlet in life. And <laughs> how to feel. The poison in the dive went right through the system. There was no antibiotics, there was no this or no that or no the other thing. Only the width and the concern of the surgeons and the people who were very, very keen to try and make something of my brother. Finally, through grit and one thing or another, nature allowed him to get that he was able to take light, a light job, engineering job. Mm. Even the guy gets liked an outlet and see he in fact in the Belfast area of the Alma Avenue, there's a name still there where my brother had helped to form different outlets for the the Belfast Rowing Club. Mommy brought me to see the Jolson story one night in the Broadway picture house. And on the way down home, I was walking past um, the children's hospital on the Falls Road. 
And I said to Mommy, I'd like to go and learn that on the piano. The, oh, how we danced on the night we were wed. And Mommy says, well, we'll get a piano and we'll get you to play that if you, if you really want to. So we got a piano one day in town. I thought it was pure magic. It was so nice to see our tenants opening up and talking about their past. Now I've worked here for three years and there's some stories I had never heard before. I just thought the combination of children, firstly our tenants absolutely love having children and I think it brings tremendous life into the building. Our tenants love it so much. What fascinated me is to see young people so um, captivated and um, completely focused on what was being said, which shows to me that there's, um, there's a huge value in work like this, in bringing generations together, in, as the project says, walking in another person's shoes. I think um, the benefit works both ways, both to the young people and to our tenants. Hello in Irish is Gia Ditch. Gia Ditch. That literally means God be with you. So some people instead of saying that say Kajay Maratatu, which means how are you? Who created the organisation and why? And how did your organisation become so successful? Our organisation was established in 1992 by a group of parents in the Short Strand and the Market areas of South Belfast, South and East Belfast. And they were a group of parents who wanted to provide Irish medium education for their children. So they established the organisation as a NINRA, or an Irish language nursery, in 1992. It grew from there in terms of numbers of children and teachers and parents involved in the committee as well. So that they eventually opened a primary school. Then they opened this centre that we're sitting in now. They opened that in the year 2000 and everything expanded from there. We also run adult classes, so that's people who want to take up classes in Irish language or art or set dancing or ball oak carving with a range of cultural and arts classes and again in the centre um, throughout the week, throughout the year. And we also run events, so musical events, concerts, we run a, a traditional music trail in Belfast City Centre as well. So that's what we do. My degree was in Irish language, so I wanted to find a job in the Irish language sector somewhere and there was an opening here, so I wanted to work in the Irish language sector and what inspires me to, to work in the Irish language sector is really the, the passion and the dedication that I see in the people who have developed organisations like this. Do you have any links with the community and what are they? We have very strong links to the local community. Um, because it was the local community who set this organisation up. Um, and more often now we have links to various communities throughout Belfast. One of the big parts of our mission is to bring an experience of Irish language and culture to new communities and, and new families and individuals. So that has brought us outside of our local community and seen us engaging in projects like this where we talk to people from schools and from other communities about what we do and about the Irish language. The people who set up the organisation got the, the idea for that symbol from, you might recognise it, if you imagine that mirror below it and more of a sphere, you would see that shape, it's quite a common Celtic design as a sphere, so what they did was they cut it in half and used the top half and because the name Andrejid means the bridge, they thought that would be an appropriate symbol because it, it mirrors the shape of a bridge. So that's why they come up with that semi-circle Celtic design um, and that, that's where it comes from. This is peanut and butter sandwich. 
organisation was set up in 1974 and as you know from your history the 1970s and 80s were a very troubled time in Northern Ireland and people in Northern Ireland were t tending to do what we call segregate which is move into areas where, where they were all single identity. This organisation was set up with the express purpose of keeping this as a mixed area and the organisation is not affiliated to any political party, it has no cultural connections and is not directly connected to any faith, however we do work with everybody. And what's really interesting is that this is a very diverse place and has become more so in the last 15 years. What made you decide to get involved in community service? I was quite interested. I came to live in this community about 30 years ago and I was quite interested in um, the dynamic that was in the community. It was a very diverse community even then and it's more so now and I really enjoy engaging with people who are different from me and I like talking to people. Some people say I never shut up. <laughs> So if you're a good talker, um, it's good to be working in community work, but you also have to be a very good listener. We have over 220 groups that use us every year, ranging from groups who are self-help groups for people who want to support themselves who have addictions, through to people who want to learn how to dance. We have a huge chess club in the building that meets every Monday and Tuesday night. There are about 60 people who do that. What other kinds of groups have we? We have musicians who practice in here. We have a jazz band. We have a guy who sings who's going to be very famous because he's a brilliant singer. Um, so there's a, a wide range of groups that use the building. Older people's groups are a big part of it. One of the mo best things about my job is that it's never the same on any given day and what I'll do today is not what I'll be doing tomorrow. For instance, I've got to meet all of you guys today, which is fantastic. Linda, can you tell us a little bit about the Skyway organisation and what you do here? So the Skyway Club was set up initially in a, through a partnership with Balnafai Community House and at the time the South and East Belfast Trust. And the Skyway Club is a meeting place for a group of adults with learning disabilities who really decided they would like to run their own club. Um, it's a different type of daycare from the more traditional day centres. So members come along daily, Monday to Friday, and they meet together with their friends and they run and plan their own activities with help from staff, myself and another colleague, Matthew. We had the best day remaking James Bond Goldfinger. Uh, so it was inspired by the film Be Kind Rewind and where they remake famous films with a very low budget and everybody loved it. Everybody loved it. It was, it was a surprise to everybody how well it turned out. And throughout the years we've kind of dabbled in a few more um, and then Band the Five decided that they wanted in on the action. So we made a film specific, specifically with them and um, we made Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So we had a day where all the community staff came down, the Skyway Club members all joined in and we remade Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. So that one we loved so much we entered it into um, a film festival in Rotterdam called Movie Sea. And the members, we had no idea um, what the outcome would be, but the members decided we have to go, we have to go to this festival. So a group of them, uh, Skyway Club, went to Rotterdam and there was a judge's vote and a public vote and it turned out we won both. So we won, I think, £1,500. Um, roughly, and two awards, so we won both, both the awards. Join this organisation? Well, the Orange Institution is very much a family organisation. My father and his un great uncles were all in it, and my nephews after me have joined the Orange Order. Um, so that would be the main reason. Um, so it would be family connections. This is my 50th year, um, so it is of walking. But I officially joined in 1982, and I'm just trying to struggle in the top of my head how long that is. Um, so it is, but it's well over 30 years. 
What are your main roles and responsibilities as District ma Master? Well, District Master is very much to give a lead to the, the, the seven lodges here in Balnafai and also to represent their views within the wider Orange Institution. Um, but also we feel a very important part here because the Orm Road is such a diverse road that we go out and be part of the wider community. So we would see that they would be a very important part of that given that type of leadership. How does this organisation connect with the local community? Well, the, the basic connection is here, it's actually this hall. Um, you've seen this part of your tour, we had a, a family 21st birthday party on Saturday night. Um, we've had wedding receptions in here, um, so we have we had christening parties and also grievance when people die, they, they would use the hall too. So this is really our asset for the Orm Road community, um, linking us into the local community. Can you tell us about any challenges you have faced since taking on your responsibilities here? Well, that's a difficult question. First. <laughs> Obviously, when I came in, the, the issue of parades on the Ormer Road was a very, um, it's a wee bit early for use maybe, so it is, but that was a very controversial period. There, were, there was rats on the Ormer Road, so there was, there was police blockades, it was a very tense period, um, so it was. so. The parades issue is still alive, so it is, you, you have to work away at that. Um, the major issue is the Orange Hall here, because if you came 10 years ago, the hall, I would term it was derelict, so we've actually managed to liven the hall up. How has this title changed your personality, skills, lifestyle over the last number of years? Being part of the institution, I have to say, I was, believe it or not, was a very shy child that wouldn't talk to anyone, and when my uncles came into the room, I hid behind the settee. Um, so being part of, I have seen young people come into the juniors who would struggle to read and write. You have a ritual where you read the ritual. It gives them confidence. It gives them confidence to try a meeting. And if you take that into the seniors, you're obviously then having to deal, we would have to deal with the police. So we would we'd have to deal with government officials, you know, at my time, I've met secretaries of states and such like. Um, so it gives you an awful lot of confidence and that uh, brings you forward in that way. And also places on you a position of responsibility. Um, that you're just not responsible for yourself. There is a group of people here that you're responsible for. Has this job changed your feelings for anyone or the way you think about things locally? If so, who? Um, I don't think it has changed. The Ormond Road is a very unique road in Belfast, you know, from what the period went through. It's, it has remained a mixed road, particularly the Ballon Five part of it, um, so it has. And my father, when he was young, was a baker and he worked in Eliza Street in Inglis's Bakery. So there's always been a thing that you, you respected everyone. Um, so there was, and I think that is quite unique to the Ormer Road. Um, so it hasn't really changed my views about people. I think if people treat us in the manner in which they would expect to be treated themselves, then I would treat them the same uh, back so the, the membership is not as, as healthy as it maybe once was, but I think that's a society change. People don't join organisations anymore. So they don't, um, so that would be the one big regret because I actually think Orientism is a very positive force when it is, it is conducted well and it can give a lead to the Protestant community. Are they happy? So, so like they're medium, like at the bottom, they're yeah, heavy. quite heavy. Uh, but then up here, they're It's a little bit lighter up the top. to work for the food bank and why? Well, I would say it's probably because uh, a lot of people, when I was a community worker in this church, a lot of people come into the door and asking, asking for, for money, for food. So um, we decided to do something about that. I was, I was wanting to give out money. I went across to the spa to buy people food, but I realized that that just wouldn't be, be good in the long term and so as a, as a church we started to talk and think about what we could do about setting up a food bank and I actually love food, uh, I'm what's known as a foodie so I love to eat food, I love to think about food and so that inspired me too and, and social justice, the fact that there are people in the world who, who just can't make ends meet so I wanted to help and do something so that, that's really what inspired me really. Do you enjoy working here? 
I do enjoy working here. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, it's an incredible chance for me to make a difference. And so, seeing the difference and the impact that we get when we give out food to people is is a pleasure and a privilege. So, I, I really enjoy working here. There's a few tough moments, you know, when you see people's need and people at their lowest point. That's tough, but on the whole, I do enjoy working here because I get to work with lots of interesting volunteers. Uh, as well, and uh, we, we work with lots of interesting uh, referral groups as well, so yeah, I, I do really enjoy working at the food bank. So the instructions that people are given is that they have to get a voucher, they have to go to a referral agency. South Belfast Food Bank have about 130 agencies. They can be a school, so we have a local school who have our red vouchers. It could be a GP, you know, like a doctor, it could be a social worker, lots of different groups. Home Plus that you guys saw last week, they, they hold our vouchers. Once they receive the voucher, they come back to one of our distribution points. This is one of them that you're that we're currently in, and they then swap that voucher for three days' worth of food. So that's really most of the instructions that we give out, really, is that they have to get a voucher. I would say, very simply, everyone uses the food bank. Not just people that are unemployed without a job, I would say people even in work, people that have have work use the food bank. Also a lot of asylum seekers, people that are new into the country um, seeking asylum, they would use our food bank as well. Basically, it could be every week until their emergency or crisis ends, and some people's emergency or crisis just has no ending, so that, that, that really, really varies how long people rely on us. I hope, we hope that it's not for long, we hope it's a one-off visit or maybe two or three, but quite often it works out that people need to come several times, but always it's referrals, always with a voucher, and um, we always keep a track on those that are here quite regular. Imagine not having a toothbrush, how would you feel if you hadn't brushed your teeth today? Well, you'd feel a bit gross and I'd feel horrible because I could smell your bad breath. So you can imagine people need to have other items than food, they need toiletries, also think of mums and dads with very little children, they need nappies and wipes, um, we also have sanitary products too. But yeah, it's always, it seems to be increasing year on year. Um, which is really sad, but those figures we give to the Trust for Trust, who are the professional body, and they then go to the government, to uh, Theresa May, and say something's got, something's got to change. So uh, they, 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 they do what's known as lobbying the parliament, and say, look, something's got to change, we've done some research, this isn't right, what are you going to do about it? When I was six years old, my mum, my dad and my three brothers and sisters were sitting around watching television one Sunday afternoon. It was a rainy day and it was in February. And a film came on and it was called The Song of Bernadette. And it was about this young girl who Our Lady appeared to in Lourdes and it told you her story and how she eventually entered the convent. And after that, I turned to my mummy and I said, Mum, I'm not going to be an actress anymore, I'm going to be a nun. So from six years old, that was when I knew that I wanted to be a nun. I first arrived um, at this parish, it would have been about 16 years ago. Um, I was passing uh, from the Ormo Road and I saw this beautiful building that looked like a castle. I thought, oh, beautiful, I thought, I must investigate further. And when I came, I fell in love with the church. So then every Sunday I would come here to worship. 
My roles and responsibilities are the pastor worker here in St Malachy's. So one of my roles is to go into the primary school and I work with the primary fours right through to the primary sevens and we take time for meditation and then I help to prepare prayer services in the school. Um, I help to prepare the children for First Communion, uh, the Sacrament of Penance and for uh, Confirmation. Um, I also visit the sick and housebound of the parish. Um, I help to prepare prayer services and when a family member has died, I would go out to visit the family and to help them prepare for the, the funeral liturgy and to offer some comfort uh, to the family and to be there for them for whatever they need and many other things that um, I forget, but just happens daily. <laughs> I live up not too far from Rosetta Primary School. We have a convent up there, and a convent is where nuns live. One of my most exciting parts of my job is going into the primary school. I love the P4s right through to the P7s, just their enthusiasm, just the way they see life and the way they can actually see Jesus working in their lives. I would say that would be the highlight of my week. I love visiting the sick and the housebound as well because we have family members but we know that family life can be very busy and maybe their family might not be able to visit them um, very often. So when I go in, I might be the only person that they've seen that week. So to me to spend time with them and just to let them speak about what their worries and concerns are, their joys and happiness too. So that also is a great joy for me. Are you glad you decided to be a nun and not an actress? I am so glad. I would not change anything for the world. I am so happy and content that I can serve God and serve God through serving his people. I think as an actress at this stage I would probably be getting plastic surgery. I would probably be fighting for roles if I had made it, whereas now I am just loved because I know that I'm made in the image and likeness of God and that outside beauty is only external, where it's who we are inside that make us beautiful in the sight and eyes of God. And we have people from all walks of life, all nationalities, come and visit the church and they'll light a candle and they'll light a candle to pray and intercede, to ask Our Lady to pray for their, for their loved one or Jesus to pray for their loved one. And that's very important to people by lighting a candle. So we're going to light this candle for all the teachers and pupils and all those who help in the Forge Integrated Primary School. So this candle is for Forge Integrated Primary School and we ask that God, our loving Father, will look after and take care of your school and bless every single one in the school. There we are. And this one is for Rosetta Primary School. Plus is a homeless charity based in Belfast. It was set up in September 2000 to help the homeless rough sleepers of Belfast and every night since then, 365 nights a year, it goes out to the rough sleepers in Belfast taking out soup, sandwiches, clothes, blankets, sleeping bags. Um, members of Home Plus would ring an organisation called the Welcome Centre and they would be notified by the housing executive if there's any beds available in any hostels. So as we go about the outreach, we also would be able to ask anyone who's rough sleeping on the street of Belfast if there's any bed, of bed availability, if they would like to take an emergency bed for one night. In 2011, this service slightly changed when Red Cross and Night Cross asked us to extend our services to refugees and asylum seekers and in the centre there's a wide range of services from food served every day we're open from Monday to Friday 10 to 5 there's three levels of English classes a week there's a clothes room, there's a computer room um, there is uh, a living room, there's a women's only English class art classes, one of the art classes for women only we have a community allotment plot that we, we attend regularly and we just give out general advice and support. It, it can be difficult but it's, it's very rewarding um, and I have learned um, that you get tremendous satisfaction from helping others and realising that we're, we're all the same, we all have the same needs 
and um, I get to see people's unbreakable spirit and I learn different cultures, it's like almost like travelling because there's people from all around the world and they're coming here and learning about their culture, about their traditions, about their religion and you get to get really close to people and you develop real good uh, bonds and it's just a real great place to be working on. Just other services that we're looking to expand into in terms of having um, a, a day out every month to take our service users away because a lot of them haven't been out of Belfast at all and because they can't work they spend a lot of time and they can get very bored and, and, and lonely and we also look into have a celebration of culture um, day once a month where we'll be someone from a different country for example Somalia would cook their food each that, that day of the month and then they would celebrate their traditions and bring in artifacts and then speak about that and um, just to be able to continue to match the service with, with, with the needs really. If someone wanted to make a donation, how would they go about that? So if you would like to make a donation, um, you can just get our telephone number from the website homeplusni.com and you can speak to um, myself or Sean, the manager of the charity and it's just a matter of simply arranging a time that you can come down to the centre and arrange a drop off and then we will gladly accept most donations. than the usual Presbyterian minister, you can tell that by the length of my hair and the clothes that I wear. And so I wasn't looking for any church because I needed a church that would allow me to uh, follow my gifting and my dreams and my imaginings of what a church should be. And meanwhile this church, Fitzroy, were looking for a minister that couldn't be just the ordinary minister, it had to be a different kind of minister. And so we found each other. And uh, I came here because I believed that the gifts that God has given me I would be able to use them here to the fullest potential. There before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne in front of the Lamb. Revelation 7. What clubs and facilities do you offer? Well, we put them all together in a booklet about three or four years ago so that we knew how many clubs and we have in the church. So there's a whole range of stuff from youth activities on a Friday night, um, on a Sunday night we have youth activities, we have obviously church on a Sunday morning and mostly a Sunday evening. Um, we have a baby and toddler group that's meeting actually this morning. Um, one meets on a Wednesday morning and then there's another on a Thursday morning that meets for more refugees or asylum seekers so that the mothers can learn English while the children play around with the, the toys. Um, uh, most days now, Fitzroy would have different different groups and we have then home groups that study the Bible together. Um, we have some groups that meet off campus. We are involved then in some community things. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on out of Fitzroy. What does the church do for the community? We do various things. We try to be as involved in the community as we can, although we can be more involved than we are. We're involved with Home Plus, which um, helps with people who are on the streets, the homeless. So we would 
Um, we would give a lot of clues to that particular project and some of us would go on the streets um, with them. We do a thing on a Sunday night when students are coming back up from the weekend and they're going back to their houses, we give them hot dogs at the door here. Um, some of our youth would teach classes in Botanic Primary School. Um, we also were inv involved in uh, Food Bank, which is down on the Armour Road in a place called Mornington that we have a partnership with as well. We're involved with Women's Aid, which is a refuge for women and children, and we would try to help out there with some resources and various things. So a church should be involved in the community because the Bible tells us that um, when Jesus came to earth, that he became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. And so a church should never be stuck behind its walls. A church should always be out in the community, as well as those things that we do on our doorstep. We're very involved in cross-community stuff across um, Belfast and Northern Ireland. Um, the peace process um, was very much, Fitzroy were very much involved in the peace process because when the politicians started to talk to each other way back in the late 80s, um, my predecessor Ken Newell was involved in those talks with Father Jerry Reynolds from Clodard Monastery. So we have a relationship with Clodard Monastery and we also run the Four Corners Festival. We help run that which is um, trying to do all kinds of events for a week around Belfast to bring people together and to try and make peace and reconciliation. I thought it was really good because um, we got to see things that we weren't really expecting. Because like, it was interesting to see like about the other people and what their different backgrounds were. And it was interesting to hear about their stories from their past.